Good morning, it's me, Mr. Trewin, back again for another lesson in geometry. Today we're continuing with our chapter on polygons, and today we're, we're going to focus a little bit on a couple shapes that fall into a group called quadrilaterals, meaning four-sided figures. So the two that we're going to focus on today are called kites and trapezoids. A kite, I know you don't believe this, but a kite is actually a geometric term. It's an actual mathematical name for a quadrilateral four-sided figure. And we decide, or we define a kite as a quadrilateral with two pairs of consecutive congruent sides, which means two sides, one right after the other, that are congruent. So when you think about a kite, and we all think about a kite as this object right here, when we talk about consecutive sides, we're talking about like one right after the other. Like these two are consecutive because they're one right next to each other. And then these two are also congruent. Now, when we look at that, that's actually the name of the kite, or the name of the, the actual name of the shape is called a kite. I know you think it's going to be, that's just a, some sort of nickname or slang, but it's not. It's actually the name. And it has a couple unique features. One, it has no parallel sides. So when we think about a kite, we have our, a lot of the items in our quadrilateral unit, we're going to learn about parallel sides. And in a kite, there are no parallel sides. And the other thing we need to know about kites is when you, uh, when you connect their diagonals, they intersect to be perpendicular. So like when I draw a line across here and I draw a line here, these are perpendicular, meaning that they intersect to create 90 degree angles. So that's a couple key features. And if you think about a kite, if you ever had flown a kite, you know that when you put one together, you got the, the plastic most of the time, and then you got those two wooden sticks that go down the middle. Well, if you look at those, they intersect to be 90 degrees. All right, so with that being said, let's look at our first example that I have. I'm trying to figure out some of the different angles in a kite. And I'm gonna have to use this parallel, or this uh, diagonals being uh, perpendicular, not parallel, as one of the ways that I'm gonna solve this problem. So when I look at number one here and I jump into my first example, I see I have 25 degrees here. Well, remember now we have a 90 degrees wherever they intersect. So right here in this, in the middle here where the two diagonals intersect, I know that's 90 degrees. Now, the other thing I should know about this is that these are, when you look at a kite, these two sides, if you think about what we've learned in previous units, they're gonna fall into being what you call um, congruent because they have a hypotenuse because I just said they're right angles or they're right, yeah, it's got a right angle, which means it's a right triangle. And this is called hypotenuse. And then they share a side, which is a leg. So they're congruent under hypotenuse leg. So with that being said, I know that if this is 25, hey, this has gotta be 25 too, because we have congruent shapes. All right, so now as I look at that, I can figure out X. If I think about this, I'm gonna just maybe draw this off to the side. Sometimes that helps if you have a hard time with a lot of variables. Draw it off to the side and say, all right, that's 25, that's 90. What is that other shape? Well, let's start off, you know, take your 180, because we know it's a triangle. We know minus our 90 gives me 90 on minus 25. And I end up with 65. So X is 65. What does that mean about over here? Also going to be 65. And then why? How can I figure out why? Well, there's a clue. Look at the top. I put a little symbol there, just kind of messing with you there to see if you're paying attention. But you see that little symbol up there? That's showing that I got a right angle up here. Well, these are, when you think about it, if you think about this top one up here, let's draw it off to the side again so we can break down the figure. If this is 90 degrees, and I draw this down right here, this is 90. Well, if that's right down the middle, what does that mean each side of these are? If I split that into two, that means this is 45, and this is 45. Well, again, going back to what's a triangle make, 180, 180 minus 90, 180, uh, 90 minus 45 tells me that this is 45, which means this is 45. So what I'm trying to go over with you is just how to break down a figure and one of the key things that might make it easier is sometimes just taking the part that you're focused on and drawing it separately. 
sometimes that helps you look at it because a lot of times when you have a lot a lot of lines drawn and angles and variables everywhere it gets a little hard to look at so try to break it down but remember look for key symbols like that 90 degree mark think about the way that these lines intersect it's important that we know that they intersect at 90 because you're going to look at a drawing and they got like one number and say how am i supposed to know everything else it's because you have to look for little bits of evidence all right, so let's do that same thing with this problem. I want to look at the second one that says, I want to find angle A, B, C. I'm trying to find the angle goes from A to B to C. So I want this right up here. This is what I'm looking for. Well, think about a couple items that we just went over about congruency. For example, if you look at this picture right here and you look down the middle as I drew a line down the middle, you should see that I now have two triangles. Think of these two triangles. And they have a 95 and a 32, which means over here should also be a 32 because we've already talked about how these are congruent. They're symmetrical. They go right down the middle. This line and it creates two congruent triangles. And when I start thinking about this overall, I might be a little bit confused as to what this is, but there's a couple different ways I can go at it. I can think of it in one term as saying, well, this is a four-sided figure. And this down here, if I put these together, is 64. And then if I think about the other ones, all right, well, I got a four-sided figure. So I got a 95, a 95, and a 64. And if I start with a four-sided figure going four, take away two, or four minus two is two, times 180, tells me this is going to have 360 degrees. Well, let's start minus each item we know. What do we have left if I take away 95, take away 95, and take away 64? How much is left of the 360? And that's all I got to figure out to get this one right here. So if I just take my calculator, I don't even have my calculator here. Let me grab one. And I always like to start these by just taking my calculator and I know what the overall figure is, 360. So I go 360 and I just basically start by minusing 95, minus 95, minus 64. And there you go. I got my answer. It says it's going to be 106. So I can write that in and that gets me my answer. Before I finish, I always like to double check my work. So if I think this is right, and I want to make sure that I've done my calculations, just do one quick double check and say, all right, one more time, 64 plus 95 plus 95 plus 106, and it equals 360, so I'm good to go. So always check your work. The other way I could have done this, I do want to show you more than one way to solve a problem because there's always more than one way. And the other way was if I left this intact, I know that each side of these are a triangle, so I could have taken a triangle, I could have started at 180, could have minus 95, minus 32, and I get 53. Well, what's 53 and 53? 106. So I know it works. So I just want to show you there's more than one way to do this. All right, moving on. We're going to look at our next shape, which is called a trapezoid. Trapezoid's got one major unique feature. It is a quadrilateral that has only one set of parallel lines. We call those two parallel lines the bases, the top base and the bottom base, or base one and base two. Then there's another key feature that we need to know about them is that sometimes we can actually have what's called an isosceles trapezoid in which the base one and base two are parallel, but the legs that's what we call these two on the side. These legs are what you call congruent. And that creates a couple key features. For example, when you have an, a regular trapezoid, the distance from, from each diagonal is not the same. But when you have an isosceles, the distance from each diagonal is gonna be the same exact length. So when we're trying to problem solve, if we see that we have these little congruent marks, we know that the distance from each diagonal is going to be the same. The other thing we should know about them, and I'll cover this in a minute, is has to do with the base angles. 
and I'll show you that in one moment. So let's look at this on our first, our, our example number three here. Looking at this, I see that it's a trapezoid. Well, at least I, I should have done this to make sure that we indicated it's a trapezoid or I should have said the word it's a trapezoid. But anyways, with that being said, it's a trapezoid. So the key features about a trapezoid are that they have parallel lines. And we learned in the very, in chapter two, that when it comes to parallel lines, there's a couple key features or a couple of things that happen automatically. And what happens is between any two parallel lines, you should always have 180 degrees. So the angle here is 90. And because these lines are parallel, between them you must have 180 degrees, which means that my variable for x is automatically going to be 90. Because the lines are parallel, therefore I have 180. On the next one, I look here, I've got to figure this letter out. Well, again, I'm going to use that same logic. Between these two lines is 180. So if that is 70, this has to be 110. And so that's how we use a, a couple of the key features, this being the biggest one, parallel. As we enter this chapter, we're going to be looking at a lot of things that have to do with parallel sides, and parallel sides are going to create these situations all the time. All right, number four, moving along. When I look at this, this is a trapezoid. I see one set of parallel sides, and I see congruent legs, which tells me automatically that if this is 80, right over here is 80. But I didn't write any variables down because I was in a hurry, I guess, after yesterday I went to school and I forgot to write them down. So 80 versus 80. Also, again, talking about being between parallel lines, that means that this has got to be 100 and this has got to be 100. So this is the kind of logic that we need to be using when we work on these problems. All right, and our last thing that we're going to look at with trapezoids is something called a mid-segment. We looked at midpoints, and when we talk about a midpoint in previous chapters, a midpoint is the middle of two endpoints. So I, for example, if you start at home and you go to school, the midpoint would be when you're exactly halfway to school. Well, we find that midpoint by adding up our coordinates and dividing by two. Well, the, what we're gonna be looking at today is called a mid-segment. So if I look at number five here, I see that the top base is 10 and the bottom base is 16. Now I see on either side that these sides are telling me that this segment is in the middle, it's at the midpoint for this leg, and it's at the midpoint of this leg. That makes this what you call a mid-segment. And the way we figure this out is, if I figure out, I want to know what the value of x is, well, it's kind of like finding midpoint. I'm going to add up the numbers and divide by 2. So knowing that this is 10 and this is 16, I'm going to go like this. 10 plus 16 divided by 2. So I've got 26 divided by 2 gives me 13. Now I know what I'm looking for there, it's 13. So the formula we use, we have a specific formula, and the formula that we're gonna use looks like this. It's called base one plus base two divided by two. Now, the thing about it is because we're adding them together, it don't matter which one's base one or base two, just add the two numbers together and remember to divide by two. But I wanted to have a formula in place because as I look at this next one, there's a little bit of a situation where you got to think this ahead. In this formula, I'm supposed to add these two together, divide by two, and get the middle. Well, in this case, I know that the base one, we'll call it x, base two is 13. I know that if I divide them by two, I'm supposed to get the number 18. And this requires me to do a little bit of algebra. I've got a fraction, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Two times 18 says x plus 13 is equal to 36. If I take away or minus 13 from both sides, I will have my answer. x is equal to 23. And like I tell you over and over, check your work. Get a calculator. Just simply double check and say, all right, 23 plus 13 equals 36, divide that in half, and what do you know, I get 18. 
All right, well, this is our first unit in the quadrilateral unit. So I hope this works out for you. I hope I've explained everything. Have a good day.